Hello, one and all, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Today, we are taking a look at a high-level match of Beyond All Reason, featured today on Satan's Clutch, otherwise known in this game as Supreme Straight. Uh, totally didn't forget the name of this uh, super common map for just a second there. A little bit of a brain fart. Spawning in the northeastern section, representing our blue team today, it's going to be Delicious Fruit. Now, when I think of a delicious fruit, probably my mind jumps to the apple. Uh, it's just all around a staple of the American diet. It's delicious. It's sweet. It's sour. It's got a nice little bite to it. It's very crisp. Uh, and I think it's probably one of my favorite seeded fruits that there is. Now, <laughs> uh, I, I don't really have a follow up to that. That's just a fun fact about me. <laughs> Anyways. Spawning in the southern section, southwestern section, representing the red team in Cortex Red, going to be Markeev. Uh, is it some... Wait, 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 no, is it... Yeah, is it Markeev? Uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe it's Markeev, maybe it's not Markeev. Uh, I, uh, I, I know somebody told me that's not how it's supposed to be said, but I have forgotten by now. So I'm just gonna go with Markeev. <laughs> anyway, gonna be down here and going for an hover lab. Interesting. That is a uh, that is an interesting choice. We don't usually see the beachhead uh, player going for a hover lab, but it certainly can do some work because if you can shut down the uh, the uh, metal extractors of your opponent over here with those hovercraft, they will certainly be worth their weight in gold. Hovercraft also are uh, well. Their their advantage is they can travel on land and by sea, and so of course they're able to claim these metal extractors out here in the water just as well, meaning that you don't really give up too much economy in the uh, like once you're established. It just is a bit more expensive to get up and running in the early game. You can see the uh, hovercraft lab here, 900 metal, versus if we take a look here, the. Uh, Shipyard is 600 metal, or the bot lab is uh, 620 metal. So quite a bit more expensive, both in metal and energy, to go for the hovercraft rather than either of the other two, which is why you can see that Markeev here has gone for quite as many uh, wind turbines as he properly has. It's very, very important. Those uh, hovercraft are very energy dense. Love to see this. We are using the uh, Resbot here to eat up as much metal on the front lines as possible with a couple of pawns and even a tick. Bold as it is to try and guard this little uh, this little Resbot here, but Sorcery Wiz is going to have none of that. Going to push forward with the commander of all people to try and uh, shut this down. Meanwhile, some Blitzes have actually flanked around here, caught the Resbot off guard, and it will be shut down. No more metal will be extracted today as the uh, Blue Team's commanders are a little bit slow on the draw here up to the front line. Definitely going to give metal control in the middle of the map to the red team, at least for right now. Um, but certainly that could change. Now, Soccer Wiz is eating up that metal uh, while we speak, but there is a killer run by right now as a bunch of blitzes are traversing the shoreline here. Going to be up to V Raven to hold this push. He sees it. Um, that's quite nice. That tech has a huge vision range, so that's, a, that's why he was uh, aware of that. He does have his commander still uh, guarding the base, so at the very least, a excellent D-gun could shut this push down uh, immediately. But the, uh, the, the actual push will eventually wrap around and come into the base here of Sharp Lucia, who has moved their commander forward to try and contest the front of the line, but has actually been ambushed and is being punished for moving that commander forward before the base was secured. Now missile trucks are trying desperately to clean this up, but they just don't have the firepower necessary to shut this down quick enough, and so the base will reduce to shambles. Sharp Lucia calls QWLP, um, quite well played maybe, quite quite well low played. <laughs> Not sure, but that blitz has that blitz push with just a couple of blitzes there, maybe uh, six or so, has completely ravaged this base. Yeah, you can see that we are down to an energy uh, storage here, a little battery, and a metal extractor. Sharp Lucia in a terrible spot right now. Eventually, the blitzes will be cleaned up in the back line here, so that aggression will die out. That is the light at the end of a very dark tunnel here for the uh, the blue team. But uh, for now, Sharp Lucia is going to have to be covered for by probably Fatter Cow, since uh, Primal Rip is already starting up that T2 uh, factory. We're about on time for that, about four minutes in. That's kind of the standard timing here. Uh, interesting. Wow. Wait a minute. So Fruit has already gotten a T2 lab out. He has eaten it back up and is convincing it er, and is uh, has already uh, melted it down and is is uh, remolding it into advanced metal extractors all around the uh, all around the base here. What an art. I, I couldn't agree more with this commentator here. Fruit has gotten this down to an art. That is beautiful. 
getting a T2 lab out before you're even f five minutes into the game. What a what an absolute chat. Now, no unit support on the front, obviously, uh, to do that, but that's uh, not a problem if you're playing in the back line here. Those hovercraft that we were talking about earlier are now seeking their vengeance. You can see that they're pushing in here against uh, Contraption, who is running away into the highlands because there is nothing that he can do to withstand this attack. He went into a naval yard here and so does have frigates under the production, um, but a lot of his constructors are going to have to flee here as these hovercraft are uh, easily going to tear down the rest of this base. Vehicle support from allies is coming out here, and that'll be nice. Eventually, probably going to be able to clean up all of these goons that are running around all over the place, but for now, that is a massive metal drain down the line. 2.3 on each of those six metal extractors. That is quite heavy. As you can see, Contraption's metal per second is now only four. Yikes! Versus uh, Markeev's 20. Definitely not what you want in the, uh, in the naval theater whatsoever. Uh, sorry about zooming in and out so much there. Anyways, uh, looks like we're getting up to T2 and handing them out to teammates here by Rage. Um, wow, I am so impressed by the timing on this T2 upgrade here. Already got those T2 metal extractors up. Doesn't even have enough energy to power the T2 metal extractors here. Um, partially just because of the wind, but also because this is just a super, super quick eco. Oh, Blue Frost says, okay, I'm done tonight. <laughs> looks like he gave up. Sharp Forever here, trying to hold the coast. Laughing is pushing in with some of his forces. Uh, wait. Trying to trying to figure out what happened here. Oh! Oh! How bizarre. Sharp Forever has transported his commander all the way over to Laughing's base, disintegrated the naval lab here, destroyed it. Ah, there's the transport right there. Gonna carry away the commander. There is no anti-air here. Do we have fighters? Uh, no fighters. Yikes. And the commander will get away with it too, completely shutting down the naval lab of the yellow player here on the southern side of the red team. Well, the northern side of the red team, the southern side of the map. What a ballsy play. If that commander had been shot down by even a single fighter pilot, uh, yeah, that would have been the commander down and there would have been a ton of metal in Laughing's pocket, but the risk did pay off. And uh, now the backline has contributed significantly. You know, I always love to see that. Meanwhile, the middle of this map is still in trouble. Sharp Lucia is uh, recovered for the most part here. Vehicle Bay is back up and running. Metal Extractors are back up and running. But a lot of ground has been seeded in the middle of the map, and that can be a tremendous amount of metal per second going back to the red team here. Uh, which, by the way, the Metal Extractors were secured here. There's this one. I uh, wouldn't have mind seeing to try maybe sneaking this one as well up in the northern section here. Uh, but certainly this is a uh, this is a push that has cost the red team or the blue team greatly. It's been a, been a great job for the uh, the red team here, pushing forward. Contraption is now building a navy, going to try and contest the uh, naval yards of Markeev, but Markeev has had more time to build up a navy, and so the forces are just that much stronger here. You can see already on frigates, whereas there are just gunboats coming out for Contraption. Eventually, Contraption will have a better economy once this all gets up to T2, because if you look at it, uh, all of these can become T2, whereas only these four can become T2. So it's 6 T2 versus, uh, versus 4 T2. However, Markvis has managed to claim this island using one of those hovercraft, which is quite nice. So uh, the Ecos are going to balance out, and I think Markvis is even going to be in quite a lead here. Especially, certainly he was for quite a while there, just because of the nature of the, uh, the, the trade he took with those hovercraft. But also just in the, the late game here, as long as he goes up to T2 relatively soon, he should be just fine. Wow, already going up to a uh, already going up to a advanced fusion reactor here. Eight minutes into the game, that is nuts. That is a crazy, crazy fast advanced fusion reactor. Tix will eventually clean up that underwater tank assault driven here by twenty five West twenty five. What an insane play! Delicious fruit showing us some spectacular bar. Rage here going up to that T2 bot lab as well. Gets a couple of these butlers out. What I love to see these butlers used for is building big wind turbine farms. Space them out like this one way and the uh, wind turbine farm will be safe from bombing. <laughs> Host trying to predict what, uh, what it's going to be here from Fruit, who is already going into that T2. This is nuts. Absolutely nuts. Hovercraft mixed in with frigates. It's actually a deadly combo. Those hovercraft are uh, immune, essentially, to the effects of the torpedo launchers here, as the torpedo launchers cannot fire at the, the hovercraft, or at least they cannot target them. So the hovercraft actually make for an essential part of this composition, because when they push in here, the torpedo launchers will only be able to shoot at the frigates. The hovercraft can surround the torpedo launchers, shut them down, and that's a huge source of damage 
uh, that, uh, yeah, it's going to be right out of the pocket of Contraption. At this point, I think Contraption's right. He cannot hold this, and so he would probably be best to cut his losses, try and eat as much of this as possible, and then retreat back to the land, go up to T2, get a whole economy up and running. Either go for Bedbugs to retake the sea, or go for uh, something like maybe, maybe considering, like, um, aircraft or uh, hovercraft spam, or even just going right up to T3 and eventually getting those T3 hovercraft out and about. Like gunships here shutting down a, uh, a constructor. It's quite nice. Constructor shining bright red, trying to heal itself. And down it goes. Advanced fusion reactor comes up. I'm trying to check the timing on this. That's why I keep jumping back to it. It's worth checking the timing on this, eating up the windmills even to fund it. Wow. This is, uh, this is precise. This is a razor's edge build right here. 10 minutes and 30 seconds uh, advanced fusion reactor. That is nuts. That is, uh, we usually we usually call a 13-minute uh, nuke. In fact, that's the, the last video I posted was about that super fast nuke that just ravaged the other side of the map. Um, we call that a, a nuke rush, but this is by all, t by all means a, a crazy eco rush here. Going up to those energy converters. This is gonna start spiraling very quickly. Meanwhile, not even close to anything like an advanced fusion reactor back here. Just still on uh, wind power and solar power back in the back line of the red team here. Um, the closest we're getting is 25 West. 25, who's going up to that advanced geothermal uh, at the moment, but is not, is not even close again to an advanced fusion reactor. So I cannot stress enough how important it is that the, uh, the advanced fusion reactor is already up and running. That's 3,000 energy per second. A lot of it's flowing back into the team, by the way, right now. So... Uh, energy converters galore ripping across the way on the blue team side and uh, all of that is going to be going into their pockets what a nasty little bill here missile trucks being quite annoying they're very very tricky to deal with for sure doing a little bit of damage ever so slowly to this pop-up lightning turret not a lot the, the lightning turret is very resistant when it's in its closed up form but when it opens up like that it takes a whole bunch more damage uh, tanks do manage to get on those missile trucks, though, but a huge collapse over on this side as those Janices were forced to waste their shots on a bunch of ticks that were rolling on through, or running on through, I should say. And, uh, yeah, that is going to eventually be repelled, but it was quite a smack right there. Bunch of, uh, bunch of Mauser are now here. T2 has been handed out, apparently. Very nice to see. Would love to see also those consoles. I note that every time I see an Armada vehicle player, especially on T2. Well, only on T2, but... <laughs> uh, whenever they, whenever we see an Armada player going T2... Uh, with the vehicles, it's very important that they get a, a, a console out to all of their teammates so they can start building that T2. So much metal is down right here. Yeah, I wonder if just reclaiming that lab and trying to reclaim as many of these ships out of the water with those construction turrets would have been the right move here, just so Contraption has that metal in his bank. Now he's flat broke trying to defend this shoreline that's not even really worth it because it's just a navy. He can't really be pushed at this moment. I mean, there was that hovercraft lab, but by this point it is long gone. He doesn't really know that, but he can assume it based on the fact that he hasn't seen hovercraft in a good long minute. Or you, I, I should say you could assume that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna claim that he will. Um, oh, interesting. Very interesting, okay. Went for a nuclear bomber. Went for a uh, countermeasure system, interesting. Went for an anti-nuke, can't blame him for that one. Anti-nuke is up before the, uh, the timing on most nukes here. Yeah, that should be, should be completed before the 14 minute mark, which is right around when you expect the, uh, Anti-nukes to start up around the around the uh, the game here. Similar anti-nuke timings around on the other side of the map, by the way. Um, so everyone's getting a little more, a little bit more worried. <laughs> uh, okay, metal metal storage is built. Oh, okay, so he he would he literally pulled out a single uh, nuclear bomber and then is going to eat this up and turn it into more economy. I'm guessing, right? That seems like the right play. Yeah. Okay. Going for more economy here, going for another advanced fusion reactor, going for more energy converters. Going to be using these EMP bombers and the uh, nuclear bomber. I wonder what for, though. Going to have to keep our eyes on that. Keeping my eye on the little symbol up here in the top left-hand corner. Trying to get better at looking at the minimap while I'm casting these things. Apparently, it has uh, finally come to my attention. I know, uh, hundreds of videos later, and uh, it's finally come to my attention that apparently I can look at the minimap to tell when interesting things are happening. <laughs> I know. Crazy, right? Anyways. Uh, yeah, these, oh, <laughs> a, uh, constructor was built here to eat up this, uh, eat up this geothermal power plant. That is hilarious. 
That's, um, that is unconventional, to say the very least, but it is certainly one way of doing that. And then he's gonna repair it, so, uh, this is, this is a weird battle, yeah. Spy, spy camera was built up here, that's why you can see what he's actually eating. Yeah, so these guys are gonna repair it as quickly as this guy is deconstructing it. Commander goes down right there in the middle of the map. Big push from these hounds, um, right here. Excited to see what those are gonna get up to. Oh, there it is. I was looking for it. Okay, so the nuclear bomber is going to be used to uh, shut down that hound aggression. That's quite nice. Yeah, everyone is panicking. Yep, the fighters are pulled immediately. Immediately pull the fighters. Yeah, there's no there's no other response. You get a little notification that says nuclear bomber has been spotted. Um, yeah, you don't really have a choice. You uh, you you pull those fighters immediately. <laughs> Advanced Geothermal goes down to a missile ship. That is par for the course here for when you lose the uh, Northern Sea. You're going to lose your Geothermal here. That's just kind of... You just kind of have to make that sacrifice. Dangerous to go for the Advanced Geo here if you haven't won the Sea, but uh, Markvis has... Or Markiv, rather, has clearly uh, won the Sea over and is uh, not really in any risk of losing it, at least not at the moment, so I think it's fair to go for that a, a Geo. Uh, another Advanced... Or rather, another EMP bomber was built here. Send figs up. Uh, he's trying to use the figs to protect here. Have to be so careful. 2,200 da 2,200 health on this or metal on this bad boy. You really don't want to lose it if you can at all avoid it. He's going in for another run. We'll get a huge amount of those hounds there. Very nicely done. Yeah, the units are firing, but it's not enough. Those are actually surprisingly tanky here, and uh, yeah, those fighters are, are nowhere near the front line. Um, put, just position like five of them near, near the front here. You've got plenty of them. Just position a couple of them at the front and uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be doing pretty good. A little bit of arguing here about uh, what we should be going into. Backline is finally up to an advanced fusion re reactor here for Rage, who has quit his uh, quit his production and is going straight into ecoing. Peons is also building an advanced uh, fusion reactor, but much, much slower because he is producing units still. Meanwhile, delicious fruit. Still scaling the eco back here, just continuing to up the up the uh, production here. You can see that beautiful four to uh, one. Well, I guess it's more like four point one here. There's uh, eight, nine. <laughs> nine is the number. Uh, nine, uh, nine of these here um, energy converters. Really struggling with my words today, huh? We're getting up to that kind of critical number of missile trucks where you can start posturing them in such a way that they are very difficult to push into. Um, very difficult to justify a push into. Missile ships raining on the uh, shoreline here as well, trying to cause like, a little bit of a panic. They uh, they don't do a lot of damage all at once. They're I mean they do, but it's not uh, you know not not a nuclear amount of damage, but it, it's still a really really annoying pestering to uh, to to have to constantly deal with this. And you can also see that now these construction turrets are forced to lock onto this metal extractor when they really should be helping this this uh, this uh, production facility here. Battleship has been produced, and it fires at a quite long range. Going to be showing away at some of these missile trucks that are just positioned offshore here. And, uh, yeah, that's, I, I, I quite like that. I quite like the battleship positioning here. It's a bit cheaper than a capital ship, but it can still shell away and get a tremendous value against the player that is in this little position. If you're in this position, this uh, this side of the straits, of course, it's mirrored, so it'd be this one. Um, you can see you're in a really awkward spot if your team loses that sea. So sometimes what I would consider doing if you're in this position is moving your economy backwards. As you can see, Soccer was appears to be thinking of, yeah, just starting to step it backwards a little bit by a little bit. Send the lychee. <laughs> lychee, I believe, is a uh, type of drink or a type of seed or something like that, a type of fruit. Uh, the lich, however, is the nuclear bomber, and uh, be 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 convinced not to uh, not to mix those two up because uh, you know if you drink one, you'll have a great day. If you drink the other, you will have drinking a nuclear bomber. Geothermal plant goes up here to missile trucks. To be expected, but it was not an advanced geothermal, so not really anything too big to worry about. <laughs> construction turret still eats it up like a greedy little boy. I love that. I love that construction turret there. That's so funny. Do we have T2 uh, naval? The the, T, the extended T2 naval? We do not. Unfortunate to see. I really feel like we should start playing with that as soon as possible, just so everybody's really cons really uh, really up to date when that becomes mainstream, when, when that becomes popular. A row of three construction turrets. Good to notice. 
the lich wings collapse when it when it lands i have not noticed that interesting that is quite interesting you can see fruit microing this here moving the constructor and then just uh starting up a whole bunch of these uh a whole bunch of these construction turrets all over the place it's a very quick way to build a ton of build power very quickly it's uh it's one of the most efficient ways you can eco You, it's it's very APM intensive, but I mean, you're not really using it on anything else, so why not, right? <laughs> you can see very efficient as well with the uh, the energy converters, 94% efficiency here, making sure to build just enough energy converters to keep up with the uh, the power demand or the power production rather, um, and then uh, going to be going to be continuing to scale that eco. At this point, this is a full on greed, um, just going up to as many advanced fusion reactors as possible. And then uh, going to be producing something, I assume, here. Sharp Forever going for an advanced fusion reactor in the middle of nowhere. Going to come up in just a humble 28 minutes. That's, uh, all right. <laughs> I do happen to know that this game goes on for quite a while longer, and I'm sure you do too if you take a look at that fancy little red bar at the bottom of your screen. But uh, 28 minutes is still very slow for an advanced fusion reactor, I would say. Not exactly sure what we're going to do with that. Going to go ahead and skip a, skip ahead here at 2x speed, actually, because it looks like the front lines are starting to stagnate. We're trying to get some T2 up on the fronts um, for both teams. We've got those Mausers out. We've got some ticks, some radars, some radar jammers, all that good stuff uh, that we would come to normally expect. Missile truck's great against the tick spam. They, uh, they of course, home in on their targets with their little, their little micro-missiles, so it is uh, very, very effective to use those to uh, shut down tick spams. This is quite nice. Sieging this uh, this porcupine up little area with these missile ships. Gonna be doing quite a little bit of damage here. Gremlin uncloaked. Uh, need need to need to cloak that first. Wow, what a tremendous waste! Would not have moved those starlights forward without some sort of escort there. I think that might have been a, either a miss rally or a miss cue or something like that. Because I don't, I really don't think he meant to do that. Thor here to uh, try and pressure the front lines here. Ooh, Commander even gets sniped there for analog. Uh, Rattlestake still stays standing, though, so that is quite nice. Yeah, missile ships being a real pest. You can see them shutting down a whole lot of the stuff over here. Beamer turrets still stand strong, though. Would love to see these missile turrets return to attacking this geothermal up here, which has been rebuilt. No reason as the uh, naval player that you should ever have this area un unattacked by some sort of missile ship. Just continually barrage out with the missile ship, just always. Uh, yeah, you'll be in a pretty good spot here. So Markvis has been taking his time to build uh, ships, been been upgrading that T2 economy, been going for T2 on land, which is quite a bit more efficient, and now we can see the fighters are rolling out. I wonder what they're doing down here. I wonder what the plan is. Looks like we've got quite a lot of... Uh, quite a lot of fighters built here. Wonder if we're going to try some nuke shenanigans. We've also got marauders running around the map here. A little bit of a marauder push. I'll slow this back down to 1x speed because I think this might be well worth it here. EMP bomber comes out to try and drop some bombs on this place. Um, not a bad move. EMP bombers are pretty good against these uh, marauder runbys here. Contraption going to try and degun as many of these marauders as possible. Another one, another one. Nice, nice. Gets two of them there. Marauders are stopping. They take down the economy, but he manages to degun enough of them to shut down this push, I believe. Uh, fatter cow trying to get this miracle D gun here. Oh, catches one of them. Could get another, maybe. Uh, not going to get it before they shut down the fusion reactor here. I'm um, going to require a little more air support to shut those down. Meanwhile, the base here for Sharp Lucia has been ravaged by these battleships, which has just been shelling away over and over. Nonstop destruction here. Uh, marauders are going to be rerouted from the blue facility to deal with the marauders incoming towards the... Uh, very, very vulnerable eco over here. I'd love to see maybe a scorpion battery or two. Just put on this hill just in case a, uh, you know, a pawn or something leaks through. You, it would be a shame to lose your entire economy to something as uh, small and dainty as a grunt or a pawn or something like that. Oh, marauders still managed to land the head, blowing up everything here. All of the construction tower, all the construction power, rather, all of the energy converters. That's a really annoying hit to the uh, economy here of delicious fruit. Shutting down that metal production means that there's tons of energy overflowing to his teammates. You can see the yellow energy bars for the blue team are now completely overflowing. Everybody on the blue team is wondering where the hell they're getting all this energy from, but I doubt if they're going to turn an eye away from it because it's probably going to be quite helpful. Um, I, ironically, it's actually very helpful for the blue team right now because a lot of them have uh, metal to spend but no energy to spend it. So uh, this, this actually kind of ends up working pretty good. 
Ah, uh, there we go. Advanced Geo does end up going down. Ooh, a bunch of hover tanks were built over here. They're actually going to try and, uh, st well, I hope they're going to try and stop these Marauders at this point. Hover tanks start firing Marauders quite a bit quicker than the hover tanks here. Just stepping on over those T1 walls, by the way. Not going to do very much against the, uh, the feet, those hardened diamond titanium feet of the Marauder. Very powerful. Very strong. Bunch of flame turrets here as well to try and clean this up, but all things considered, I mean, it's just T1 defense. It can't do all that much. Oh, advanced, geo, or advanced fusion reactor almost finished up here. If that uh, if that finished when these guys were destroying it, it could be pretty bad here. EMP bombers, nicely done though. Shutting down a whole lot of this here. Excellently done. Yeah, those hover tank gonna shut down a large portion of this. EMP bombers going to uh, shut down most of the most of the marauders here, although they still do get a huge amount of damage. These two going to be unfrozen in just a couple seconds here. Always better to EMP your uh, your teammates' base rather than to uh, you know EM or uh, bomb bomb their base. <laughs> uh, marauders do get the kill on that advanced fusion reaction or fusion reactor. Pardon me. Uh, quite unfortunate. They're not done quite yet. They are still ra running forward here. Blue Frost, get the D gun. The D gun. Oh no, the one that got away. Uh, Blue Frost, just for a second, not paying attention. In fact, loses the commander for it. Yikes, that hurts. Uh, and now it's going to be on laughing to resurrect as much of this as possible. Try and put himself back together. Still a ton of windmill power, so not the end of the world uh, per se. But that is still a really, really annoying hit. His label was open? Interesting. Not sure exactly what happened there, but uh, yeah, apparently he was here. He was not AFK, uh, but did not manage to degun a bunch of those. Shrug. <laughs> Yeah, Laughing was in position. There was just too many Marauders. All said and done, this push was way less effective than it could have been um, for the blue players. It was definitely shut down moderately well. I would say that that definitely could have been a whole lot worse, but it worked pretty good. Sneaky anti-flagship. Ah, that's true. Could try and capture it. That would be pretty funny. There are, yeah, no depth detectors here, so we could walk this thing right underneath the flagship. Do they actually see this? They have no clue. <laughs> Oh, that'd be tremendous if you walked this thing underneath the flagship and captured it. I would love to see that. Oh, um, Marauders are incoming, though. They're looking to take advantage of this gap over here. Um, this gap that is made of walls. <laughs> Usually there's a gap here, but it's been sort of extended forward so that it's not quite as open. Not quite as vulnerable. Tachyon here to try and do some damage as well. Do quite a bit, actually. Can burst down those uh, Marauders with a... Uh, fair efficiency here. But it can only fire about once, maybe twice here, if it's lucky. And indeed, it will only fire to kill a single Marauder as they run through the base easily here. EMP bombers again, very nicely done. Uh, it's so frustrating to play against those because you have this entire bush that just gets completely shut down by a couple of EMP bombers that just tear apart your, uh, tear apart your entire bush there. Nicely done by Peons, who has managed to uh, do an excellent job of getting those EMP bombers out when they are needed and where they are needed. Very, very nicely done. Saving not one, but two teammates here from complete annihilation as he uh, manages to shut down a whole lot of those Marauders. Well, all of those Marauders that were running through there. Tons of artillery built here for V-Raven. Uh, looks like Eco is being supported in the back here by Primal Rip. Interesting. Looks like some uh, energy converters have been handed over as well. Razorbacks. Where are those Razorbacks shooting at? Fighters, I guess. Uh, there must be fighters queued here to uh, rally in such a way that they're pulling the fighters of the red player. I see. Commander does go down over here, unfortunately. Um, how did it go down is the question. Not sure exactly. Uh, didn't look like there were any torpedo bombers or anything like that, or uh, torpedo ships. Oh, but there are these long-ranged uh, torpedo launchers. Yeah, those must have gotten it. Those are very, very dangerous. Uh, Hover Tank's trying to take this island back. I really like it. I really, really like it. It's important to shut down this economy. It doesn't seem like it, but over time, this can really be a huge amount of economy in the pockets of your enemy, and there's no reason to allow that to be the case. 
counter Marauder push over here, but now we are up to uh, <laughs> we're up to T2 walls, which I do believe stop Marauder, um, as well as medium mines, which also stop Marauders. One thing that I would recommend is layering your mines. So put put a row like or staggering your mines. So put a row like this, and then put the other row uh, staggered one piece apart. Yep, he knows to Juno it. It's a good idea. The question is, how are you going to Juno it? There's a missile in the way. Or a mountain in the way, rather. A mountain in the way of the missile. It's going to be difficult. See, the walls here are quite sturdy. You could send just one through. Surely just one wouldn't have a problem. <laughs> oh, nice. Torpedo bomber hit there. Oh, just barely doesn't kill the uh, kill the flagship here. Down to two percent. Oh, that hurts so badly. Oh, we're grouping those up awfully bad too. Yikes. Uh, okay, a lot of them actually survive. I'm quite surprised. A couple of hits from Flak would have just completely done in this massive cluster of torpedo bombers here. That is a ton of torpedo bombers. Really, really worrisome. Could have been could have been quite bad. A couple of Thors are on the front lines now. They're cleaning up the street quite nicely. Commander goes down. Takes a couple of lightning bolts to the face. There's not much that can survive that. Snipers, however, very good. And they do manage to turn back those Thors. Force them into a strategic retreat. Uh, here's where the torpedo bombers have been coming out of. Markeev's base, uh, who does appear to be looking to go into some sort of hovercraft spam as he is setting up a, a uh, spam factory. <laughs> Sounds a little bit odd, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, case in point. Pop. Pop. Yeah. It's a, uh, just a bummer. The longer you wait over here, the more time there is for Contraption to do something about it. And uh, at this point, he's got the commander in the place. He's uh, trying to put the commander directly in the line from these marauders. The D-gun could certainly kill these marauders if they funnel in at the wrong spacing. Um, yeah, that, that, that hurts to see those Junos continuing to collide with that mountain. Meanwhile, ticks are starting to run in here from the uh, light blue player V-Raven. Jeez, the ego here is insane. Gone up to five advanced fusion reactors. I mean, it's not like the craziest ego we've ever seen, but just going up to five fusion reactors and then right into uh, mass air labs. Oh, and then just disassembles the air labs, going into more advanced fusion reactors. Very, very high level play. Really goes to show what those high level players are very, very uh, often capable of. Commander goes down, that's quite nice. Razorbacks here though, as well as the Thor, are going to be more than enough to turn back this little Marauder run by. Um, I think they waited too long. I think they probably could have been, uh, they probably could have been successful in some sort of push if they had just braved the minefields, but of course, they also had no idea of knowing that those minefields were only uh, one and a half thick. Most of this has been revived here for laughing. Uh, what's his economy looking like at the moment? 4,000 uh, energy per second, 41 metal per second. Not terrible. Um, yeah, certainly not terrible. Getting a bunch of these hover tanks back up as well as some of those marauders is very, very nice. It's going to help push into that uh, naval theater here. Uh, a lot of gorgons were built, but not actually a whole lot of uh, anti-submarine capability. So marauders are still going to do phenomenally if they sneak their way underneath there. Ooh, bed bugs have been built. Very strong. Bed bugs are the uh, cortex equivalent to the tumbleweed, uh, and they work essentially the same way. They uh, explode if they get too close, or you can manually detonate them for an even bigger explosion for a bigger prize. <laughs> so he went down eco in order to uh, build a, or he went down in production in order to build an advanced fusion reactor, and then went back up in production to build another advanced fusion reactor, or, or to build a. Uh, he went down in production to build an advanced fusion reactor and then went back into production with these T1 air labs. Fruit's definitely got some sort of a plan cooking in his brain, but I just cannot read it. My uh, my little monkey brain is not good enough to uh, figure out what he's doing here. He's clearly miles beyond me. He's speaking a different language, some sort of alien, alien language that I'm not capable of understanding. Torpedo Bomber's here to uh, save the day once more. There goes that ship, actually reduced to rubble even. Uh, so it will not be refloated like this one back here. It's quite dangerous. Uh, very nicely done to get those torpedo bombers out. It's sort of a failure on the behalf of Obsolete not to move those anti-aircraft ships forward. But frankly speaking, with this many torpedo bombers, it doesn't even matter if you have the aircraft. Because they can just 
drop the torpedoes, and even if you shoot them down, the torpedoes will find their mark, and you've uh, you've still lost your flagship. It's uh, it's tricky. There's there's not a great counterplay to it other than just going into some sort of aircraft yourself. A little bit of a hovercraft, well, float by. <laughs> Is that the right term for hovercraft? Uh, yeah, some hovercraft are trying to float their way around the map here, but there are EMP bombers to shut all that down. Again, so frustrating, right? You think you managed to outsmart them, you, you moved your units around, you managed to uh, fly them around the side of the map where you least ex or you think they'll least expect it, and then, uh, yeah, out of out of nowhere, just EMP bombers to uh, shut down your parade. Really, really heart-wrenching stuff. <laughs> Both uh, aircraft, both T2 aircraft plants uh, for Armada and Cortex in the back line here for peons, interestingly enough. That could only mean that he's thinking about going into nuclear bombers or maybe even some uh, transports. Uh, yeah. Fruit knows that uh, one likely option here for the red team is that they're going to go for nuclear spam, so he starts up a whole bunch of anti-nukes preemptively here. It's not a bad idea. Um, it is disheartening to hear the nuclear launch detected sound and then uh, realize that it was actually referring to multiple nukes. Nuclear launch is plural. Oh, there goes a lot of those torpedo gunships. Uh, and I'm not even sure. They didn't even really hit their target there. That's quite unfortunate. V Raven says getting bored of this match. Um, yep, that uh, that tends to happen. These long matches can, can definitely start to uh, stale out if your teams don't know exactly how to close the game. Uh, frankly speaking, though, it's more common when you have lower-ranked players. You can see that this match is fairly high-ranked. This is what I would call the uh, the mid-range to upper echelons and even a couple of pros. I would certainly call Markiva pro um, and definitely delicious as well. Or does he prefer fruit? Well, maybe he'll uh, watch this and let me know in the comments. <laughs> I believe fruit showed up to the stream today, uh, recording this as of Wednesday. Wednesday evening. Uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays I do stream, by the way, in case you are interested in that sort of thing. We play a lot of fun matches. Uh, this time around we were playing uh, Heart of the Swarm Simulator, where I was playing as the scavenger units and uh, everyone else was trying to kill me. And it was a, it was a really fun time. It was, it was a fun game mode and I was really thrilled by it. But we also have some other stuff we play, other uh, fun game modes. Trying to just read chat here and see what uh, see what they're bickering about. It looks like they're trying to decide whether they're uh, whether they're going to be in a in a decent position here to continue the game or not. Um, from my perspective, I mean, you can see that the uh, economy difference is uh, not tremendous. It's it's about 400 metal uh, per second, but it's also fluctuating like crazy um, on and off here. So it's not like that's 400 metal consistently. That's just. Uh, here and there, there's a little bit more metal going back to the red team. But certainly, oh, well, now it's in the blue team's favor. Eh, it, it really just depends who's reclaiming at the moment here. And you can see that uh, that essentially boils down to who's getting aggressive. Right now, the aggression is coming out of Primal Rip, who's moved the Thors forward to break this front line. I, uh, I really appreciate that. I think that's probably a great way to tie up this stalemate here and gain a little bit of ground. Certainly wouldn't mind seeing somebody try to break back into the naval theater. Hovercraft labs have come up and online here. Uh, Markeev does not have the economy to sustain all this, but he is working on it, trying to build that uh, T2 economy in the back while also pumping out T2 aircraft. Probably best to just leave the T2 aircraft to his teammate for the time being, just so that that isn't a huge eco drain. Uh, and then he can get up that T2 ladder, start scaling that economy exponentially, and eventually going to be in a really nice spot here. As you can see, similarly in the back line here for Fruit, who is uh, continually taking apart his labs, putting it into fusion reactors, and then going back into labs. Uh, going into T2 labs here, interesting. Popped a T2 lab down, picked it back up in an instant. Very nicely done. Going T3, what are we gonna go for? Ah, uh, Razorbacks, okay. <laughs> Fruit loves to drag out these games. Well, I'm curious what Fruit's uh, e eventual plan is going to be, right? It seems like there's, uh, it seems it seems unconvincing that he's actually chosen a strategy here. He's gone into air, he's gone into Razorbacks, he's gone all over the place. I'm just not sure, I can't put a pin on him. He's just all over the place. Wow, this is quite a minefield here. Medium mines galore in this massive minefield. And uh, that is, uh, I mean, it's not terrible. Certainly if a bunch of Marauders try to push through here, which is likely, uh, they're, they're gonna be met with a harsh step. Commander goes down here. Was that uh, that was Contraptions Commander? Oddly enough, I wonder what he was doing on the front lines there. Very odd. 
Razorback's gonna be more than enough to hold this line from a bunch of hovercraft spam, though. Snipers are uh, pretty good, but they're wasting a lot of their shots on this spam right here, so it's difficult to break past that, especially when they're spamming pawns or something like that. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's annoying because, first of all, you know that they're willing to just waste metal to throw units at you to waste your shots. Um, but also, they're not throwing ticks at you, which means, uh, you know, they, they must have a decent economy somewhere back there. <laughs> now, these pawns are coming all the way out of the back line here, um, from Rage, who has got a decent economy as well. This is nothing to scoff at. We're up to a solid and sturdy, uh, combined total of 55, uh, energy converters here and several advanced fusion reactors. A whole whole handful of fusion reactors. Fighters are moving in. There are some bombers in the mix here. Okay. Do we have enough to clear a path? I think we just barely do. Oh, flak is pretty good though. Oh, anti-air is pretty good though. Those flak turrets do manage to shoot down the bombers in the nick of time. Oh, bombers crashing down still causes a lot of pain, though, as a lot of that build power does go up in smoke. Not going to be a huge problem as these switchers can rebuild here, um, but certainly not the uh, not the ideal scenario. <laughs> they flack the shit out of that place. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a fair assessment, I guess I would say. Shield bubbles, a nice little inclusion here, just making sure that in case there's any uh, Ragnaroks being built across the map, uh, which there are not. The, uh, the option, or the, uh, the the deflection of those Ragnaroks is not going to cause a problem. These capital ships really need to move forward and start causing some damage. I think certainly shutting down a couple of these bases over here. Although that being said, it sort of has devolved into the uh, the back lines versus the back lines here, echoing their hearts out. The front line is sort of semi-stagnant as there's just a whole lot of pawns running forward into a whole lot of grunts and uh, snipers and all that sort of stuff. This is nice, reclaiming these uh, hulks on the front lines here, eating up a whole bunch of metal. Very, very nice to see. That's that's for sure. This Black Hydra shelling away from long distance here, trying to penetrate the bubble shields of uh, Fatter Cow, who is putting up a whole nother one. Got two already. I think with two, you can hold off a single Black Hydra, but not a bad idea to go for three, just in case. You never know. You never know. Getting into that really proper late game here. Advanced fusion reactors just going up like crazy. Uh, not using build turrets, just using the uh, air constructors to assist T2 air cons. Not a bad idea. The uh, T1 air cons are actually relatively efficient for the mobility you get from them. Massive wave of hovercraft here, swimming by or floating by here to uh, try and shut down a lot of this. They actually get into the gums of this uh, this navy pretty badly. Yeah, I gotta give it to them. That actually is uh, that actually is a lot of damage that, are, that they're going to be able to do here. Shutting down the anti-air surely, but also uh, even worse here, just going to be shutting off those torpedo launchers because those cannot hit the hovercraft after all. The bombers trying to shut down whatever they can. Not bad. Twenty-five West says blue is pumping Thor's like a mofo right now. Uh, incorrect. Blue is not pumping doors. Blue is constantly changing tactics here. Going for more and more build power in the back lines. You can see he's uh, using, again, those uh, T1 constructors here to build all of those, uh, or to, to use as build power for those T2 constructors in the back line here. How long does it take him to throw together an advanced fusion reactor? Um, about 18 seconds <laughs> to the fusion reactor. That is nuts. The economy back here is nuts. This is, uh, we're already up to 700-ish metal per second. Uh, we're getting to the point where we cannot run out of metal quick enough. There, there's just no way to spend it all. Wow. In case you're looking for a good idea, or a good example of how to eco properly, that is, uh, that is just downright ridiculous. It's hard, right, because you run out of space, but apparently that is the answer. You just go into those T2 aircraft, or T1 aircraft plants, you build about 4,000 of those T1 aircraft, uh, and you use all those as your build power, and that way you don't have to worry about construction turrets. Um, the only construction turrets you use are to build those uh, construction craft, which of course help you with those, uh, help you with those, ooh, yeah, help you with those uh, construction projects. Juno missiles are landing here to take out some of those landmines, that's quite nice. They don't really know that they're hitting those, but uh, it is. It, it will be nice if Marauders do eventually manage to make a run by. It'll be difficult, though. That's a lot of underwater uh, capability over on this side of the map. 
Thors versus Thors. Uh, I'll give it to the Thors for the win on this one. <laughs> More hovercraft trying to find an angle here, but this is frankly well defended. Uh, plenty of Razorbacks, plenty of Shivas. They're a wombo combo. The Shiva can take away any big clusters of units, and the Razorbacks can burst down anything even tankier than that. Um, yeah, those, those really work together phenomenally in tandem here. Was there a lol cannon built here? Looks like they tried and uh, got shut down by Black Hydra. Annoying. Definitely annoying. So what do you do here as a frontline player? Like, uh, for instance, Soccer Wiz. I think what you probably do is you just back off and you just start building an economy in the back line here. You just, you, you go back here or, I don't know, maybe back here somewhere or maybe even over here. Um, oh, which is exactly where Soccer Wiz is. Wonderful. What, a, what an excellent example right that. I promise I didn't spectate this game beforehand. <laughs> yeah, so it, this is a perfect example. Yeah, just back off the front line that's just constantly being harassed here and just start building an economy because you're not really going to be able to contribute until you eco-scale like a madman. And uh, if you're just focused on economy, eventually you're going to be able to get into something, uh, something like a efficient enough economy to contribute to the fight once again. That is a veteran flag if I've ever seen him. 163 kills. What a hero. What an absolute hero. Yeah, metal extractor is no longer valuable. We're transitioning all the way into an energy-based economy here. So much metal in the bank, but it's just because we cannot spend it quick enough. More and more constructors being produced all the time. I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty curious. How many constructors are we up to total here? It's a total of 928 constructor points. <laughs> More. More Aphis. Uh, at this point, it doesn't become a matter of what will he go for, as a matter of when will he go for it. Because, frankly speaking, um, every option is available to him. There is, no, there is no limitation to what he could or couldn't go for. He could go for several Nostradamus maneuvers simultaneously. He could go for the unit spam to crash everyone's computers. He could go for T3 production uh, every second out of multiple labs. Uh, there just there is no there is no upper bound here at this point. We've we've grown so exponentially. There's uh there's there's not a ceiling anymore. <laughs> we smashed through it hours ago. Well, ages ago. Haven't quite hit the hour mark yet. I'll speed up to 2x speed, but I doubt we're gonna get there. Oh yeah, we're not even at 0.7 speed, so it's not even not even really worth it. Can't even handle 1x game speed now, as uh, there's just too much T1 spam on the field. At this point, why even have the T1 spam? You've already got the Thors on the field. You've already got the Razorbacks. There's not really a need to contribute that much, uh, those that many units to the field, and you're just really adding uh, you're adding frame density. You're adding you're adding processing delay, and you're adding all these different things that uh, slow the game down. And I think that's uh, it's worth considering turning those off into the late game, especially. I mean, both sides here. So much metal has been invested in this for what? You're you're essentially just throwing pawns away. Um, all that metal could go into a crazy economy, as far as I can tell. Black Hydra still firing here, actually deflecting some shots. That could be kind of dangerous. Yeah, these shots are actually headed in uh, bad directions here. Uh oh. Uh, yeah, we could accidentally cause a huge chain reaction if that Black Hydra keeps firing in that direction. So, like, as far as contributing on the front lines go, we've got those Thors that were out there. We've got, uh, you know, we had those Razorbacks that were produced and sent over in this direction. That was quite nice. Um, but when you have an economy like this, you're sort of responsible for ending the game. Uh, so what's it going to be? That's the question. What is it going to be? Oh, all right. Eat up that uh, T1 constructor with the split. Gonna go for a T2, maybe? Yep. So, uh, are we thinking about T T3 Cortex at the moment? Maybe Juggernauts per second? Um, are we thinking about going into uh, Cortex Economy? I don't see a reason why it would become important at this point. We've, thro we've crossed a threshold where minor efficiencies, like the difference between Cortex and Armada uh, economies, really matters here, so I, I, would I have a hard time imagining it's that. Uh, what are you going for, Delicious? All right, eats up those labs. Uh, it will be T3. Okay, interesting. Usually Armada T3 is a little bit more, uh, well, it's considered a little bit more versatile, so uh, I'm not sure, not sure exactly what the point is here. <laughs> it would take upwards of 500,000 metal to Judo kill an Aphis. Interesting. Yeah, the, the Juno does a tiny bit of damage, but uh, you, you technically could do it. 
uh, Ragnarok here is firing away, and a lot of these shots are bouncing all over the place. Yeah, you can see them being deflected out across the map here. Right into the eco centers, doing way more damage than the cannon can actually reach out and hit. Um, yeah, is this too slow? Is this, I mean, if we, if we don't see some sort of an action soon, this is going to be uh, pretty dangerous. All right, Juggernauts are coming up every, uh, you know, 30 seconds or so. Maybe even less than that, really. EMP bombers do not work on doors. The doors are immune to paralyzation. They have EMP paralysis uh, resistance. Immunity. They are unshockable. <laughs> They've got scout points flying around the side of the map. Interesting. Very interesting. The cannon continues to fire, and it would only take a couple deflected shots here to try and do a little bit of damage in the back line. Um, while Delicious has done a great job of keeping his economy safe, unfortunately, it does not look like uh, Sharp Forever or, or, sorry, Sharp Lucia or Sharp Forever. Oh, I just realized they have the same name. I thought I mis misspoke there, but they're actually, uh, they must, they must be, they must know each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, their, their economies are quite a bit more exposed as far as plasma ricochets could go, so. Uh, it could be a dangerous chain reaction if both of those players go off, it could just set off everything else here. And, uh, be the end of the story for the blue team. But he isn't doing anything with it. That's the name of the game, isn't it? How much eco can you get away with before you, uh... Before you, uh, you know, have to have to actually start producing units here. Uh, well, it turns out about 50 minutes of eco. Torpedo bombers here. Uh, are they gonna get it? Is it one shot? Uh, not quite. They're looping back around. They're gonna try and get it. Yep, that'll do it. Those torpedoes hit the water, and that is a dangerous cluster of munitions. Oh, maybe not. Oh, okay. It does barely get, barely manage to get that capital ship. That, uh, that could have been bad. This uh, stream of light scout uh, aircraft here. It's not flying directly into flak. Wouldn't mind seeing that changed. Pincers are trying to roll forward over here. Uh, interesting sacrifice. Yeah, we're just going into juggernauts per second. All right. Um, might as well point out, by the way, a solid 1,030. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, let me. I know, I know this is a long one. Just give me one second. Pulling out the calculator. Quick math: 1,030 times 60. One zero three zero times six zero. 61,800 build power is going currently into this uh, lab just from the air alone. Not even to mention the, uh, <laughs> not even to mention all of the construction turrets in the background here that are contributing. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, just in case you wanted to do the math, not all these are contributing, but that is a solid 157 construction turrets. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Gonna have to do something to break this wall here. Firing at it is one option. Wouldn't mind these guys spreading out and firing at the wall either, though. Uh, T3 helping tear down the wall, apparently. <laughs> no, they're obviously trying to fire on those tanks, but uh, what's actually end up happening is they, they hit the wall most of the time. Um, still, the wall stands. Those pincers are uh, fairly disappointing. Their, their damage is quite low. Yeah. Whoever is floating metal, I need it. Yeah, okay, Mr. 1,585 metal per second coming in here. <laughs> 20 second jug, is that right? Let's start the counter. And go. Oh, it's less than 20. It's like a 10 second jug. Have you ever seen a juggernaut put together that quickly? I mean, you might as well be printing pawns. That is, that is insane. 
How many juggernauts do we have to now? Yep, just a cool 12 juggernauts like it's nothing. Heading towards the front lines. Set up spam for mid, that's a good idea. Keep those juggernauts protected. There may be 12 of them, but it only takes a couple of, uh, a couple of deacons. Gorgons are built here, so these hover tanks are going to have a hard time breaking out of this. Those Gorgons are quite, uh, quite dangerous. They spit a massive amount of plasma projectile out every second. Sort of like a miniature Ragnarok, I suppose. The Ragnarok of the seas, as they say. The chicken of the cave, in other words. So no one eco is more impressive than the entire eco of delicious fruit. Uh, however, there are more players alive on the red team than there are alive on the blue team. Um, and, well, I guess I mean there are more players with bases on the red team than there are on the blue team. However, with this many juggernauts, uh, you essentially can just walk them towards the base. And there's, a, there, I mean, essentially there's nothing they can do, right? They can degun them. They can degun one, and then they can degun a second, and then they can maybe degun a third. But by that point, they've taken so much explosive damage with that commander that it will kill it anyways. And uh, as bizarre as it is, fruit is now at an eco point where there is no, uh, there's no, there's no like wastefulness, right? He or there, there is an unlimited wastefulness rather. He he just can use these at his leisure, no matter no matter what the cost is. Um, it is an insane point to be at. Also, a wall cannon is coming up over here. Interesting. Uh, this can't actually hit very much, if I'm correct. Uh, I am incorrect. Yeah, it could actually wipe out basically all of Laughing Space, as well as scratch up essentially all of uh, Blue Frost Space back here. Yeah, okay, actually I don't hate that whatsoever. Not bad. Now luckily it was spotted here by the red team. Uh, these hover tanks did manage to find it, at least I believe. Let me double check that. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Getting a little bit laggy here. Too many units taking a break from the, uh, the the overview here to take a look at a individual little battle. Yeah, well, whether whether he saw it or not, they definitely uh, know that that many constructors in one place means that a wall cannon is coming up. A bunch of Razorbacks helping tear down these uh, fighter or tear tear down these bombers here. Massive fighter push, but is completely deflected by the fighter forces of Sharp Forever. Excellently done getting that many fighters out, doing a great job of protecting this the, the high skies before the blue team here. Yikes. Juggernauts. You know what? I better get a clip of this. I better get a clip of this. That's, uh, that's a lot of juggernauts per second. <laughs> yeah, it's down, it got down to like 10 seconds for that juggernaut to come up there. That is nuts. There's, there's not a lot that beats that many juggernauts. There's a reason they're a T3 world ending class unit. They're, uh, they're meant to crush the end of the game. Now, Titans can do the same thing, and arguably a little bit better, uh, because they're a bit a bit quicker. So you can move them around with a little bit more finesse than the uh, Juggernauts can. Um, of course, they're a lot less tanky. You need about three or four Titans to take down the Juggernaut. Uh, however, they are again, yeah, a little bit a little bit faster, a little bit uh, quicker on the draw. Their weapons can reach out a little bit further. I think actually that might not be true. The laser I think reaches out further, but all the rest of it is pretty much the same. <laughs> oh, this march is ridiculous. Twelve juggernauts coming towards you. What do you do? Twelve juggernauts walk into a bar. Uh, man, that's going to be a hard decision. I'm always looking for the uh, the thumbnail, right, to clip. It is a hard decision between this many juggernauts and uh, all those Thors and Titans standing against them. What a uh, what a crazy showdown. In the late game here, I'd love to see some uh, Junos being spammed, by the way. I see them landing all over the place on the map, but I think it would be worthwhile to just consistently keep parts of the map Junoed, uh, just to make sure that no radar jammers come up at any point. Now, Juggernauts can chain react, sort of. 
their, uh, their explosion does cause damage in a big AoE, so it's not uh, unfathomable that they will chain react on each other. This one's even just stomping on this bad boy. Thor's putting up a uh, as good a fight as they can. One juggernaut goes down, scratches up the rest of them. Kill as many as you'd like, I've got more. That's what Delicious Fruit is saying. <laughs> Surprisingly, a whole bunch of platypus were the thing to break through here. All the gorgons go down, all of the, uh, well, basically everything goes down as these platypus manage to uh, shut it all, shut it all off. Surprising. Wouldn't have expected that to be the weapon of, uh, the, yeah, well, yeah, the weapon of choice here. Um, but it worked pretty good. At this point, a, uh, yeah, the, the wall cannon has finished and it's a firing. What is it firing at is the question. I cannot see what it has targeted at the moment. Is it just on fire? Oh, it is just on fire at will. Okay. Should definitely be pointing that thing at the economy centers of the, uh, the red team here. Yeah, there goes the, uh, there goes our hero. Watch him as he dies. Might have taken down a juggernaut or two. Uh, doesn't matter because there's more where that came from. <laughs> Juggernaut also phenomenal anti-air because when their explosion, uh, well, happens, uh, yeah, they tend to kill all the airplanes about them as well. Uh, like that. Juggernauts also have an even bigger explosive radius if you self-destruct them. Um, you can see the bigger circle is their self-destruction radius. Can't get that menu out of there, but anyways. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is another option as well. You can just walk them into your enemy's base and self-destruct. In fact, I wouldn't mind seeing that here. Just start self-destructing this, uh, this one right here, and, you know, you'll, uh, you'll have to give up a Juggernaut. I know. It's unfortunate, but worthwhile, I would say, in order to, uh, shut down all of these defenses. Uh, Resbots could be quite nice, putting all this together. I mean, not, uh, not out of fruit. He's got other plans here. He's just worried about the juggernauts. But, uh, yeah, certainly out of maybe people on the front line. That's one way that these T1 bot labs can be repurposed. Just go into, uh, res bots and start funneling metal back to the team. Yeah, looks like fruit could use it. Surprisingly, his, his bananas economy is not, is still not enough to pump out this many juggernauts per second. He's not even overflowing yet. Not even overflowing while producing juggernauts? <laughs> Pathetic. Pathetic. Titans over here from Obsolete are starting to march in, accompanied by those pincers for uh, some, some spam support. Uh, Titans are great, uh, especially against these shields, because they have those laser beams, of course. I mean, Juggernauts are too, but uh, yeah, you can you can start to shoot down those shield generators with the, uh, the lasers, the rockets, all that good stuff. So many explosions. It's hard to watch up close. It's hard to even tell what's happening. <laughs> to give you a uh, recap here, Delicious Fruit did nothing but eco for the first 50 minutes of this game, um, and in the last six minutes has produced uh, probably about 40 juggernauts, if not more, and is now walking them in a line all the way to the enemy side of the map. You can see the blue line of juggernauts here. Um, you can even see it on the uh, on the mini map. All those all those heroes stepping out into the ocean, stepping into the enemy bases. One by one, they step forward, they die, they explode, they clear the path, and they continue marching forward. So it was it was times like these is when they chose the name Beyond All Reason. Certainly, bummed we didn't get to see some sort of crazy nuclear play, um, like the uh, you know new, uh, witches or something like that. Because those are always fun. Ah, Resbots on the front. Make me look smart with this uh, this claim here. Very nicely done. Going to start feeding that metal back to team here. You can see that Delicious is now gaining a spurt of metal every time that uh, Primal Rip is sending metal back to him to build more and more Juggernauts. Build all the static defense you like. It's not going to help. One Juggernaut gets a little too close. And suddenly everything has gone boom. Surprised this Lola Cannon hasn't been as effective as I imagined here. Um, this thing could just fire into the back lines. Uh, yeah, it's trying to pierce these shields. Should just it could, it could just fire at the back here, and a single ricochet could uh, land in the back and just wipe out everybody on the uh, the back side of the red team here. 
Nuclear launchers from Markiv will go up in smoke as the Thors roll forward. Juggernauts, of course, sacrificing themselves. Advanced geothermal pops like a big balloon, showering everything around it in sparks and fire and death. Ah, we've even gone into the uh, gone into the bed bug production here to shut down the capital ships. Uh, surprisingly effective. Yeah, learned that in a game of my own. Um, that uh, bed bugs, tumbleweeds, very very good. Who knew? Looks like uh, Peons is claiming the uh, moral high ground here, letting everyone know that he did call that, uh, you know, the the eco-balance would be skewed if fruit was left uncontested. Um, and to be fair, Peons did go for a few bombing runs. I think a couple of them even had double digits worth of bombers. So uh, it was it was, it was was fairly close, certainly. But uh, he's right. There is a... Uh, I, I didn't see it, but I also don't pay attention to chat very much. Um, but yeah, if you let someone get away with this much economy, there's not really much you can do against it unless you have an equivalent economy in the back. And it looks like neither of these players uh, was able to carve out enough space to get that economy up and running. Tons of windmills here, though. Those could have gone. Uh, meanwhile, I'm missing explosions. Pardon me. Pardon me while I miss the explosions here. It's the biggest crime I could commit at this point. The real crime is this wall cannon just firing away into these shields, not getting any value whatsoever. What a bummer. Give Metal Con. <laughs> Again, torpedo bombers are like okay ish at taking out these tumbleweeds, but you can see this is the problem. They attack one of the tumbleweeds, and then uh, all the rest of them are, uh, are, are free to continue running forward and wreaking havoc all over the place. Bed bugs, I know. I, they're, they're essentially the same unit. Tumbleweeds just sounds a little cooler. Don't worry, guys. I killed a juggernaut. Oh, there's another one. Hold on. Let me dig on that one, too. Oh, oh, wait. There's another one behind that. Oh, okay. They, uh, they don't end. <laughs> that's what the, uh, that's what the red team is dealing with right now. They, every juggernaut they kill, two more pop up behind it, just like the mythical Hydra. 25 west, 25. Going for the, uh, D-gun. There we go. Wow, the double D gun, very nicely done. Silver Star Hero now, as uh, he has managed to disintegrate two, uh, two of these massive behemoths down to oblivion. Bombing is fairly effective against these, actually. Certainly enough hailstorms could uh, bomb these down to oblivion. Is 22 enough, though? Not nearly. You need probably about 100 um, in order to get that to work. Very difficult to coordinate and, of course, very prone to be hit by all those fighters right there. And uh, that's, that's never a good thing. This is the this is the death of a man in slow motion. And I know it's in uh, I know it's in a slideshow frame rate, but uh, it's the it's the best I can do. Damn it! There's only so much my poor computer can hold on to. <laughs> Counter wall cannon being built over here by Rage. That's an interesting option. Um, not a bad idea, I suppose. Do whatever you can to try and gain some sort of an advantage. Uh, will this be able to fire into the back line here? It's mirrored, so I'm assuming it should. Yeah, all right. Might be able to hit the back line here. Might even be able to ricochet and cause a little bit of an issue. Uh, more metal. More metal. Resbots here, picking up everything they can, eating up these uh, corpses. Do I even want to know how much metal is lying in the floor? Oh, 131,000 metal there for a second. It's a little disjointed now as it uh, d disconnects all of these different uh, corpse files here. But yeah, easily over 100,000 metal lying on the floor from all these juggernaut wreckages and everything else. Oh my god. What a nightmare. This will be up in about a minute. Nice little reprieve from the artillery strikes. I'll take this brief moment of silence to say thanks a ton for watching. If you made it this far, please consider liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. These uh, YouTubers are commonly known for asking. It really does help us out a whole bunch. Anyway, self-sellout aside... 10 second juggernaut spam. Yeah, not uh, not wrong. Um, might even be inaccurate. Very well could be 9. <laughs> 25 West 25 has been uh, rebuilt and is now heading out to once again save his homeland from obliteration. Trying to dig on these juggernauts. Ah, that juggernaut might still be close enough to cause some damage. Ooh, just barely not. Wow, look at that hero. Only took about a quarter of a health uh, of damage from that juggernaut. Nicely done. 
Yeah, the spam isn't quite covering these juggernauts this far in here. The spam is more concerned with pushing in and trying to destroy these bases over here. Uh, not doing a great job, but at the very least, trying. And uh, that's all that counts, right? All that matters. Is that you do your best. Yeah, those pawns are shooting the aphises up there in the north here. Second uh, juggernaut is degun, and at this point, this is a gold star commander. If we're playing unbalanced comms, this guy would be able to shoot halfway across the map. A little bit of a dragon, dragon push here, unaccompanied by fighters of any significant volume, though. So it'll only take about six seconds for all of these dragons to get. Bursted down by a bunch of anti-air towers as well as a bunch of fighters. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to see here. One, two, three, four. I declare a dragon war. Five, six, seven, eight. They're all sunk to the bottom of the lake. Nothing left to reclaim from those bad boys as they crash into the ocean seabed. West 25 trying to uh, recuperate here, but there's just too many of them, Captain. The juggernaut continues... <laughs> All I can do is micro geeking and jugs, by the way. Two. Whoa. Bless me. Uh, he's not wrong. That is essentially all he can do, and now the juggernauts are even within striking distance of his base. Oh, there goes the build power. Commander moving forward here. Oh, uh, he wants to get him in a line. Oh, one. Oh, two. Can he get the third? I think he can. There we go. Three. He manages to get the third. Sacrifices his commander for it, buying his team precious seconds to continue living their death in uh, brutal 4K clear view television. Ah, the wall cannon has come up, and the uh, pink players are making a little bit of a little bit of an attempt over here. So you can see it now piercing through the shields and uh, starting to strike some of the outermost defenses here. Uh, not piercing too deep yet, although it is getting there. Uh, eventually, I fear going to be able to hit the, uh, the build power back there, which is essentially maintaining everything. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting there. One day. <laughs> One way or another. Oh, a couple of hits there. Uh, not enough to chain react to build power. Oh, you need, like, one good hit in order to chain react the build power, but he's just not getting it. Oh, there it goes. As soon as I look away, of course, the build power does go down. All right, that's going to mean those shields are a bit exposed. It's going to open up this base to a little bit more harassment. Every single one of those hits Here goes the uh, build power. But, of course, uh, it's a little too late. These juggernauts are already way too far into the base here of uh, Rage, who just doesn't have the economy to contest them. There's just no way. You just, you just don't have the several thousand metal per second. I mean, the story is all told up here on the top hand side of the screen where you can see nearly four and a half thousand metal coming in for the blue team versus the meager 1.5 thousand metal, which of course I say with some uh, moderate level of sarcasm because that is still a tremendous amount of metal. It just doesn't compare in uh, respect to the multiple thousands of metal coming in for the blue. Resbots, of course, are a critical part of that see just these four alone pulling in 200 metal per second off of these wreckages, but uh, even more could be added on here. So the problem with bombing down juggernauts is that it's very effective, but also you tend to lose the bombers, um, because a lot of them will tend to be over the bomb or over the juggernauts when it dies, just like that. You see, lost, I don't know, maybe a fourth of the bombers that went down just there. Time for another bombing run over here. Looks like we're going for the... Uh, the advanced fusion reactors, good target. And they will pop like a overstressed light on a Christmas tree. And uh, that will be the end of the eco here. Well, on the front line anyways, for Rage, who has taken over the uh, taken over this lane. I believe it was a yellow player that was, that was uh, controlling this beforehand, but Rage has stepped up to control the sea lane. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use the uh, Ragnarok over here to try and burst down this advanced geothermal. That's not a bad idea either. Yeah, eventually, it'll probably be able to do it. Just gotta get the shots into the right location here. And one or two more, and we should be there. Those uh, those bombers are still a bombing. Oh no, sorry, those are uh, those are red team bombers. What am I saying? 
are still bombing, but they're uh, they're not bombing the red team. Luckily, <laughs> lucky for the red team, I guess. Uh, and now those shots are ricocheting all over the place, way into the back line here, giving everybody a solid panic. Yep, you can see the eco has already exploded here for uh, Rage, who's now going to have to rebuild. Uh, is there time though? He needs a T1 constructor, and I don't think he has a T1 lab. Uh, he needs a shield right here, yeah, to bounce those shots off of. Very, very critical that he gets that up and running very quickly. This Ragnarok has essentially served its purpose. It can't really hit anything else. I guess it could fire way off into the distance here, but I don't know if he can even see that, if there's even a scout for this. We can enter the player view. It's a bit laggy when we do this, but uh, okay, he sees there's a nuke right there. I'm not, or a, uh, a fusion right there, rather. Not sure why he's not targeting that. It's not actually there anymore, but uh, it still seems like it'd be a viable target now. These, uh, these little, these little pincer tanks are not achieving much effect, except for draining a massive amount of economy out of the back line here. Um, Juggernaut's having a hard time actually navigating through this little maze that's been created, funnily enough. I don't know. Do we think uh, 14 Juggernauts is enough to win it? Because uh, if not, we could probably do, oh, I don't know, maybe 34. <laughs> Take it or leave it. This is, uh, this is ridiculous. You, uh, you may even say that this is beyond all reason. I'm a little bit beyond speechless at this point. What is there for me to uh, suggest other than the fact that the economy has stopped growing here for fruit, who has just, I mean, obviously just gone entirely into production here. Not really a reason to continue growing the economy. There's, uh, there, you, I mean, you could shave seconds off of uh, juggernaut production, right? But at this point, it's already won. The only other thing is maybe going for airplay. You can certainly see somebody uh, in the back line here maybe see Sharp Forever going into those nuclear bombers and just spamming out a whole bunch of those, sending those across the map. They're very tanky, so even if you fly them into an air wall, they're going to make it pretty far before they uh, actually get stopped. This is already death, though. This is walking death. Each one of these is a thermonuclear warhead with a shot with, with twin shotguns, a laser beam, and rocket launchers on its, uh, you know, left, right, on, left, right, and center arms. <laughs> yeah, those, uh, those juggernauts hit the, uh, hit the back line. And uh, it is decided that, that will be the end of this game. Beautiful explosions here. Oh, didn't mean to pause right there. Just meant to slow the game down a little bit, but it's already at point four speed. Wow. As we come to a close on this game, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, staying out of the game for 50 minutes or 40 minutes, however long it was, is a very risky strategy. Um, and unless you allow your team to, uh, you, you know, you let them in on the information that you're probably not gonna be contributing very much in the early game. Um, they might get mad at you, but in this case, it appears to have paid off. What an epic push with those juggernauts. Not a lot that could have held it, and uh, just goes to show what a really properly built economy can really do. Thanks a ton for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been the Brightworks, and I will see you in the next video.